Welcome everyone back to Buenos Aires, Argentina. We are starting another video in a cemetery here in Chacarita Cemetery once again. This time we are here in front of the final resting place, the tomb of the famous tango musician Carlos Gardel. see many people here visiting paying tribute as well and now we were here before in a previous video and we were here during the summer in Buenos Aires in our previous trip we visited this tomb of Carlos Gardel with a friend who we met here in the cemetery an Austrian gentleman named Wolfgang very nice guy he helped us find the former tomb of Juan Perón and then we helped him find the tomb of Carlos Gardel. Why are we here? Well, we've been to the final resting place of Carlos Gardel twice now. And I want to go to a place where he lived here in the city. And there is a, such a place. A few metro stops down, there is a, an old house that he used to live in that is now the Carlos Gardel Museum. And since he's such an important uh, historical figure in Argentine culture. I think it's only fitting that we go to his former house and we check out the museum that is there in his honor. So come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's gonna help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video, enjoy. All right, so we took the Metro too. The uh, Carlos Gardel stop which is over here in the Abasto neighborhood, a little bit uh, east of uh, Chacarita Cemetery by about five metro stops on the same line, line B. And this is the neighborhood where Carlos Gardel uh, used to live, where he lived when he was a kid, where he grew up. And uh, that's actually the house, I think, the house that is now the museum uh, is the house where he grew up. And right here on our way over, from the metro stop over to the house, uh, over to the museum. There's this like little pedestrian walk here, the walk of fame of Carlos Gardel. And they have right here a statue of Carlos Gardel. Monument to Carlos Gardel, right there. There's a little QR code you can scan. If you want uh, a little more information, and here he is, right here. It looks like they put this monument up in 2011 on the 121st anniversary of his birth. He was born in 1890 in France, and he died actually uh, in 1935. He was only 44 years old when he died. He died in a tragic plane crash in Medellin, Colombia. And all along this uh, road here, there's like plaques that have been put up in honor of Carlos Gardel. And uh, there's like a, it's a little sculpture over here of like an accordion. Anyway, the, the thing about Carlos Gardel, is, as I mentioned, he was born in France and moved when he was very young, when he was like two years old, his, his mother, his, he, was, he was born to a single mother, and uh, moved to, um, to uh, Argentina. And when he moved to Argentina, when he immigrated, his mother claimed that she was a widow. And the reason she did was because his father was apparently like married to another woman, and he was like the baby of a, an affair that she had, that his, her mother had with, with, uh, with her father or his father. So it was sort of a, you know, shameful and there was a stigma and she didn't want 
to be associated with that stigma, so she just said that she was a widow. And that was the story for quite a long time. But actually, the story gets more interesting because there's a controversy over Gardel's birthplace, whether he was really born in France or if he was actually born in Uruguay. And the reason for that, well, is also a little complicated. Let's head over to the museum. We can talk a little bit more about, um, about that controversy. Now, I imagine because this museum is like in honor of Carlos Gardel and um, it's in his house, like his former house. And I think, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think it's still sort of like operated by his estate. I don't know that they're really gonna talk that much about the uh, controversy over his birth, right, in Uruguay, or, or the controversy over whether or not he was born in France or Uruguay, but um, we're gonna talk about it, that's for sure, because it's interesting, and um, it's still something that's like debated to this day. And not just debated like um, social media conspiracy theorists debated, but like, I think there's actual like historical scholars who have proposed that he um, may have been born in Uruguay. And also, there are statements that Gardel made himself um, saying that he was born in Uruguay. And he also uh, filed some legal papers or went through a process to sort of, um, I guess to like change officially uh, or leave some paper trail of the fact that he was born in Uruguay. But there is also a, a reason for that, and we'll talk about that more, I guess, once we get over by the museum. Before we get into that uh, birthplace controversy with Gardell, we should talk more about why he's famous. Um, and he is very famous, that's the thing. He is um, not just famous here in, uh, in Argentina, although he is very famous in Argentina. He's famous all over the world because He's probably the uh, the foremost uh, tango composer and singer in all of history. And he was a multi-talented gentleman, a composer, a singer, an actor. He's the kind of guy who, um, in just 44 years on this planet, made a, a vast impact in the culture of many different countries. And the thing about Gardel is he's, he's kind of like that guy who um, can basically uh, can basically do everything and is good at everything, right? He's a composer, he's good at that. He's a singer, had an amazing voice with an incredible range. Some people refer to him as a tenor, some people refer to him as a baritone, he was both because he could sing in a great uh, range, um, you know, a range from tenor and baritone. As he started to get really famous as a singer, he was able to um, spin that fame into uh, acting in movies and becoming uh, a relatively famous um, actor as well. Now, Gardel, like I mentioned, died uh, when he was only 44, and he died in a plane crash in Colombia. And when he did, in order to um, return his body to uh, Argentina, his body basically like went on tour to a number of different uh, countries, a number of different cities, and laid in state in those cities for people to pay homage. And in all of the cities in New York, um, in uh, Rio de Janeiro, in different places where, in Uruguay, in Montevideo, in different places where his body was like laid in state for a few days, there were huge, huge crowds that came out into the streets. This is. Uh, one of the major, major global celebrities of the era who, uh, who passed away tragically young in, in a plane crash. So you can expect that there's going to be a lot of people coming out um, for the funeral. But we are coming up to the block here. I think, I think if we go left up here, then we're at the museum, basically. So... Now that we are closer to the museum, I said I would talk more about the birthplace controversy. And, you know, we've mentioned a little bit about it, but really, the situation is just that, uh, 
there is some evidence, most of the evidence points to the fact that Gardel was uh, born in France to, uh, to a single mother. Um, and that, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, when he was two years old, his mother and he moved here to Argentina. And that's the end of the story. When he was a kid, um, that was the story that everybody basically knew about him. His mother worked here in the, um, in the neighborhood of Avasto. She worked as um, like doing laundry, but very specifically being able to press uh, clothing in the French style, which at the time was very popular. And it was a skill that you needed to have uh, or that you would have needed to like have learned probably in France. So also like his friends, his childhood friends, friends of the family, they referred to him as, as French. They referred to the family as French. So like there's a lot of evidence for many, many years, from when he was young, a lot of testimonials from people that, uh, that he was French. And there's also birth certificate records that have been traced back um, to, to France. And also he has made statements and both written statements and um, you know, uh, like statements uh, in speeches that he was from France. So there's a lot of evidence that points to the fact that he was born in France. Now, there's also a little bit of evidence that points to the fact that he was born in Uruguay. And it's not just, like I mentioned, conspiracy theorist type evidence. He actually had made statements, Gardel himself had made statements that he was born in Uruguay and uh, had also sort of um, started a process to create a paper trail showing that he was born in Uruguay. Now, for people who believe that he was born in Uruguay, that's enough evidence for them to, uh, to know for sure that he was born in Uruguay. But for people who want to disprove that theory, the motivation that they give for the reasons why he was making those statements and why he was attempting to create a paper trail showing that he was born in Uruguay and not in, um, in France is because he was living in Argentina during World War I. And after World War I, he was going to do a musical tour of France when he was very famous. Now the problem is, um, he was of age to be drafted into the military in France uh, during World War I. And if he was born in France, that would make him a French citizen, which means that legally he should have returned to France and joined the military during uh, World War I, which he did not do. So essentially, uh, he could have gotten into a bit of trouble if he had gone back to France after the war and it was found out that he had dodged uh, the draft. So that is the supposed motivation for why he would start to create a paper trail showing that he was born in Uruguay and uh, to sort of uh, to make statements that would support that story because he was afraid that if he went to France, he would possibly be detained, penalized, or somehow punished for not uh, enlisting in the military during World War I. Now, nobody knows what's true and what's not. Like I said, most of the evidence supports the fact that he was born in France. Uh, the story of him wanting to avoid uh, any kind of legal problems when touring France having to do with not uh, joining the French military during World War I. It's logical. It seems to make sense to me. I, from the little bit of research I've done, tend to believe that he was actually born in France and that was the case. But I wanted to mention the controversy because it exists and it still exists to this day. Anyway, I think we're close to the museum. We're going to go see how much it costs. I think it's only a few thousand pesos and we'll head inside and then we can actually see some of his uh, his old stuff, I hope, and see his old house. And I'm I'm quite excited. I'm quite excited to do this because we've we've known about Carlos Gardel, and he's been on our radar since our last visit to Buenos Aires back in the, in the summer. And um, now that I know that this museum exists, I'm very excited to see it. All right, and there it is, right there across the street, Museo Gardel. And there's a picture of the guy right there, Carlos Gardel, on the front. And as you can see, little house, not very big. Um, 
It actually kind of gets lost amongst uh, the rest of the houses. If it didn't have the sign, you would never really know that this was the house, former house of uh, Carlos Gardel. Reminds me a lot, actually, of Casa de Dios, the former home of Diego Maradona that we visited over in uh, La Paternal the last time we were here in Buenos Aires. That place was the same, sort of a, just a small, unassuming house along a block that you would never know was actually his house unless, uh, unless you saw the sign, the plaque on the side, and you really knew. That was a really interesting visit too. I really like visiting people's houses, old houses of famous people. It's very cool to see, especially when some of them at least are uh, preserved inside to look like what they looked like when, when they lived there. Anyway, if you want to check out that video about Diego Maradona, there's two of them actually that we made. Uh, and they're both linked down in the description. All right, let's go inside and check this place out. All right, so we made it inside. And it looks like there are some things preserved here. Old uh, record players over here. Some of his old chairs. Some old photos and documents over here. This is, this is Gardell, I think, with his first, uh, with like his first band. Here's Gardell with, right there, in the back, with it looks like uh, the family of one of his friends. So this is Gardel's father, who I mentioned was uh, was married to another woman at the time, and this is Gardel's mother. So his birth name was Gardes, Charles Gardes. And here they're showing. Toulouse, the town in France where he was born. Yeah, Charles Rumal Gardes. That's him. That would be when he was, I don't know, like four or five years old. And this is like his French birth certificate, it looks like. Here's a picture of Gardell, adult Gardell. That's when he was already very, very famous. At that point, here's young, young Gardell with, uh, with a friend, I guess, Alfredo. De Ferrari. It's a very dapper era. It's a very dapper era that he lived in the early early twentieth century. You know, everybody out hats, hats, three piece suits, ties, looking dapper. Is this uh? Let's see. Teatro San Martin. There's Teatro San Martin up there. I think these were other uh, singers at the time. Let's see. Yeah, who Gar Gardell met when he was young. This was in 1915 at the Teatro San Martin, which is the theater up here. So that would have been when he's like only pretty young, 19, 20 years old. Or no, I guess older, let's see. It would be, he was born in 1890, so it would have been when he was 25. That, or, oh no, this picture is from 1902. So yeah, this. That, if he had met them then, that would be when he was like, yeah, young. 
12. Uh, some old music, old guitar, old records. Now the thing is, like he, Gardell was insanely popular. Like it can't be understated. Um, I did read a story that he, when he first toured France, when he was <clears throat> ultimately like in the towards the height of his popularity. He was there for a month, and they sold 70,000 copies of his record, which is, is insane. Um, that, like, in a month back then, you'd sell 70,000 copies of your record. That's, that's a big deal. Some pictures of Gardell when he was older. And like I mentioned, he didn't, he didn't live to, to old age. I mean, he died when he was 44. At the height of his, uh, his popularity, too. I guess it's the way to go if you're famous, right? <laughs> Although I don't know if I'd want to go in the plane crash. That's that is how a lot of famous musicians have died, though. Is Gardell singing on the radio? National radio in 1930. And these are some of the films that he was in. I know this, El Dia Que Me Quieras, is the title of one of the films that he was in. I guess these other ones, are these also, yeah, I think these are also titles of the films that he's been in. So he wasn't, I mean, he was known as an actor. None of the films really, um, stand out uh, as like um, like basically the only reason why people still remember the films is because he was in them they don't stand out as great films on their own but just the fact that he was in them makes them you know historical uh, artifacts this is his discography I guess wow wait is that yeah, I guess this is his discography. So his first recording that he was credited on, his first recordings were in 1912. So he was 22 years old. Look at all of these, jeez. An incredible number of recordings. All the way up to 35. The last one, Volvió, Volvió Una Noche. Volvió una noche. Let's see what's behind this curtain here. Something to the memory of Carlos Gardel here. The Ultimate Voyage. Oh, well, I guess this is about his pl the plane crash. Yeah, this is a picture inside the plane of them inside the plane right before it crashed. Now, if I remember correctly from what I researched, the, the plane crash was like, it happened on the ground, I think. I think two planes crashed into each other on the ground. Like it happened at the airport. His funeral and homages. This is like, yeah, his uh, the mausoleum of Car Carlos Gardel. Oh, this is this is in Chacarita where we were. This is his mausoleum, and these are people out here for his for uh, like a ceremony, uh, an homage to Gardel a year later in thirty. 36. Here's the his body going to the cemetery and being entombed. Look at all these people who followed his followed his body to the in the procession. Yeah. 
Yeah, after he arrived in Buenos Aires. Because, like, as I mentioned, um, when he died, his, his body toured a number of different cities and then arrived here in the 5th of February, 1936. So, let's see, he... Uh, 14th of June, I think. I think he died, yeah, so he died in June. And his body didn't make it back here until February, 1936. Head out here. Wow, look at this. These old posters. I really like looking at old um, posters, old advertisements, old marketing, old movie posters and concert posters and things like that. So cool to see like the art style, especially when it's like really well preserved. Here's Gardel in one of his films. Luces de Buenos Aires, the lights of Buenos Aires. I think Gardel was like famous as a singer at just the right time, right? Because movies with sound just become a thing right as he was hitting his, like, the height of his fame. Because ten years, ten years earlier, probably wouldn't have been as famous. Perhaps he would have, but he definitely wouldn't have been as, like, a super famous uh, movie star. It's Carlos Gardel with, who else? Mary, Peggy, Betty, in July as the Rubias of New York. The Blondes of New York. Is this uh, Carlos Gardel with Man Tito Luciadro and Manuel Belufo? Here's uh, Carlos Gardel on the set of the film Cuesta Abajo. Here's the grand, gigantic photo of Carlos Gardel. So past the Gar Carlos Gardel, I didn't know this was here, but uh, there is a huge section here, including like this timeline on the walls, that is uh, dedicated to this guy. This guy right here, Anibal Troilo who was also a tango, like, uh, band leader and composer, um, who later, later than, um, than Gardel, he was, this guy was born in, like, 1914, but he was born right here in Abasto, in the same neighborhood. So the museum here, I guess, is more than just a Carlos Gardel museum. It's a museum to, like, Anibal Troilo as well, and tango in general.
telegrams from Torillo. Newspaper clippings. Here's something very Argentine. So, as you can tell from uh, this photo over here of Troilo, he was a large gentleman, a little rotund. It says here, querido gordo, right? Dear gordo, <laughs> dear fatty. This is a thing in Argentina. If you come here, you gotta be prepared for this. Like, if you're kind of fat <laughs> and you make some friends here, they will probably call you gordo. They will just call you fat. As a term of endearment, not as an insult. It's just kind of part of Argentine culture. They will insult you in a friendly way. It's but they will only do so if they're like your good friend. El otro Gardel de Abasto, the other Gardel from Abasto. Well, we saw it. Carlos Gardel. Saw his house, saw the museum, saw some cool old photos of him and some of his old stuff. And um, there was there was more in there, of course, like the uh, all the um, the whole section about uh, Anibal Troilo, which I was not expecting, and who I didn't actually even know about until I went there. When I saw that whole section, I did a little little side research for a few minutes just to check out who he was and very very famous as well very famous um, tango musician and band leader from right here in Abasto so very cool to have that in there there wasn't as much Carlos Gardel stuff in there as I thought there was gonna be honestly um, as far as museums go it's a pretty small museum and not just because like they don't have a lot of space in there they have a lot of space in there There's just not that much Carlos Gardel stuff in there I was a little disappointed by that, but for the price of like 3,000 pesos for foreigners, and uh, if you're a resident, I think it's like 500 pesos, um, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth going and checking out if you're interested in Carlos Gardel, and I super was interested in Carlos Gardel. Ever since we had, uh, we had seen his, um, his tomb back here in the summer when we visited with our friend Wolfgang. Anyway, check out the links in the description for the other videos that I mentioned. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video. That's gonna be the end of it, because we've seen what we need to see about Carlos Gardel when we talked about him. And he's a really interesting figure, and it can't be understated uh, like how important he is culturally to Argentina, because um, uh, tango is so important culturally to Argentina. And he is, like I mentioned, probably the foremost, most famous uh, tango musician and composer of all time. So, it's very cool to see the house where he lived and learn a little bit more about his uh, his story anyway hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stick around because there are going to be a few more videos um, here from Buenos Aires and there's definitely going to be more videos from here in Argentina so uh, stick around for those and we'll see you in the next one